I know most of the people are connecting from different locations and with different time zones. I welcome everyone to the webinar right now. The title for the webinar today is uh, when to target PMP, uh, like whether we need to go for the PMP exam based on the 5th edition or whether we need to go for the PMP exam based on the 6th edition. Before going into detail, I like to introduce myself first. I am Alagesh Narumugam, an alumni of IIM Kodi Code and having around 19 years of experience in the IT industry. I worked for different companies and then some of the big MNCs like uh, IBM, Tata Consultancy Services Limited, FIS Global Business Solutions India Private Limited. Also, I worked in various uh, domains and uh, sectors like uh, banking and financial service domain, insurance domain, automotive domain, supply chain management, as well as travel and transportation domain. I have more than 10 years of experience in the management area and played different roles like project manager, program manager, transition manager, program test manager, delivery manager. I am a PMP certified person from PMI in 2011. Also acquired the risk management professional certification from PMI in 2012. Again, in 2016, I acquired the PMI ACP certification, the Agile Certified Practitioner Certification from PMI. I do possess other certifications uh, from different certification players like Axelos, Global Association of Quality Management, Global Association of Risk Professional, Scaled Agile, and Skills. From Axelos, I acquired the Managing Successful Program Certification, both Foundation as well as Practitioner Certification last year. From Global Association of Quality Management, I acquired the Software Testing Manager Certification. From Global Association of Risk Professional, I acquired the International Certification for Banking Risk and Regulation. And from Scaled Agile, I acquired the Safe Agile certification, and recently I have done the e-governance professional certification from these skills. That's about me. Coming back to the webinar title, like uh, when to target PMP, like whether we need to go for the exam based on fifth edition or sixth edition, right? Fine. PMI like launched the sixth edition on September 6, 2017. And from that point onwards, candidates have confusion like whether they target PMP exam based on fifth edition or they can target PMP exam based on sixth edition. So we try to find a solution for this one in this webinar. Let us move to the next slide right now. The content which I am going to share it right now is like uh, we'll be covering the pinbox installation changes first, followed by like what are the advantages as well as disadvantages of appearing for the big exam based on the fifth edition, followed by what are the advantages as well as disadvantages of appearing for the exam based on the sixth edition, and uh, success strategies for appearing for the exam based on fifth edition as well as sixth edition. And finally, like uh, common traps, like uh, during the transition phase, like from PIMPA 5th edition to 6th edition, as well as the conclusion. At the end, we have this QA section. Fine. See, from the process uh, changes perspective, there are three areas I can highlight here. Uh, there are new process added to the 6th edition, there are some deletion from the earlier edition and there are some process movement from one knowledge area to another knowledge area. New processes, if you see like manage project knowledge is added as part of the project integration management knowledge area, knowledge area and control resource was added as part of the 
resource management knowledge area and implement risk response was added as part of the risk management knowledge area. Fine. The eliminated process is closed procurement process like this is the one process eliminated from the fifth edition. And if you see the process movement like estimate activity resource was moved from project schedule management to resource management. Whatever the project resource management as well as uh, the project schedule management, uh, these names are as per the sixth edition. The earlier, like they have different names in fifth edition. In nutshell, if you see, like uh, there are 47 process in sixth edition, and then uh, as of now, as per sixth edition, we have 49 processes. Three processes were added, and then one process was deleted in this case, and uh, one process was moved from one knowledge area to another knowledge area. So it does not change the arithmetic here. Fine, we can move to the next slide to know about the name changes as part of the sixth edition. There are name changes to the knowledge area as well as processes. There are nine processes we have name change and then two knowledge areas we have name change. Project time management was changed into project schedule management. Similarly, like project human resource management was changed into project resource management. These are the changes related to the knowledge area. Process name changes, if you see there, perform quality assurance was changed into manage quality. Plan human resource management process was changed to plan resource management. Acquire project team was changed to acquire resources. Develop project team was changed to develop team. Manage project team was changed to manage team. Control communications was changed to monitor communications. Control risk was changed to monitor risk. Plan stakeholder management was changed to plan stakeholder engagement. And control stakeholder engagement was changed to monitor stakeholder engagement. These are the name changes for the knowledge areas as well as the process. Why this important? Like those who are willing to go for the PMP exam, actually based on sixth edition, they need to pay attention to that. Like you can expect some questions from this area because PMI always want to test whether the candidates are aware of the changes happened in the PMP sixth edition. So these are very important for the candidates who are planning to appear for the exam based on the sixth edition. Fine. We can move to the next slide right now. Uh, it's about the other important changes as part of the sixth edition. The introductory session as well as the environment in which the project operates, these are the two sections significantly rewritten in the case of sixth edition. Fine. Uh, in the fifth edition, if you see the, the tools and techniques, right, it's like they have the techniques listed there it's like directly there. But in the case of sixth edition, they are grouped under common headings like uh, data gathering, data analysis, data representation, decision making, communication skills, and interpersonal and team skills. So that is a major change we can see from the sixth session perspective. And also like you can see from agile specific tools and techniques have been introduced into the pinbox today. Right? And the information on how to use agile, adaptive, iterative, and hybrid approaches from the perspective of the project management process groups are also added here. These are some of the changes related to the sixth edition. We can continue with the changes in the next slide. A new section, the role of the project manager was added. This is an important addition as part of the sixth edition. In this dynamic world, like the role of the project manager is increasingly complex and uh, every company is expecting the project manager is, uh, needs to have uh, uh, skills like apart from the technical project management skills, they also expect the project manager to have leadership skills as well as like uh, strategic and business management skills. So in order to fulfill those demands as well as like the project manager need to interact with the various stakeholders in the process and uh, they need to know clearly like what are the roles and responsibilities, what is the responsibility of a project manager from each and every stakeholder perspective. So, this is addition actually which uh, like help us to know more about in this area. And from for each knowledge area, knowledge key concepts were added for each and every knowledge area as well as like uh, trends and emerging practices were added. Like uh, the environment is changing, keep on changing right now. So the trends as well as the emerging practices will choose that demand like or uh, added as part of the situation. Salary consideration also added for each knowledge area. Yeah, like we cannot apply the same process like a PMP process for all the projects. Like each and every project demands some kind of tailoring. 
based on the size of the projects or other requirements. So they given guidance for that. Like uh, those kind of information are also added as part of the sixth edition. For each knowledge area, uh, like they also added the agile as well as adaptive environments, a consideration for those things. And also like explicit explicit introduction of project documents were added for each processes. In the fifth edition, if you see like uh, there are some project documents mentioned in the output as well as in the inputs. But in the case of uh, sixth edition, like all the documents which is needed are uh, given there explicitly. So the inputs as well as the outputs for uh, all the processes, if you see like there are some additions happened there you know, from the perspective of project document. Uh, these are some of the changes, like important changes related to the pinbox tradition. I like to add one more point here, like uh, uh, in the sixth edition, some of the definitions, right? Like uh, whatever you see the definition in the sixth edition may not be the same in the sixth edition because they try to align like uh, PMI lexicon project management terms, like uh, what are the definition is there? For example, like uh, uh, PMBOK 5, like is having some kind of term, it is also present in the PMI lexicon project management term. The definition which is mentioned in the uh, lexicon project management term is uh, taken as uh, the definition for the PMBOK substitution. So you can see some kind of uh, definition changes there in the case of substitution. They want to standardize the process there from PMI perspective. So these are the changes I can tell you like from PIMBAC 6 tradition perspective. We can move to the next slide right now. We we'll talk about uh, when to target for the PMP exam. We can try to find the answer for this right now. Before that we need to know like what are the advantages of appearing for the exam based on uh, fifth tradition that is before 26th March 2018 and what are the disadvantages of appearing for the exam based on fifth edition. Okay. See, like uh, the advantage, the key advantages of uh, appearing for the exam based on fifth edition is like uh, we don't have any syllabus change here, and then a lot of study materials are readily available, and uh, you can very well actually practice well actually, and then able to achieve the certification. And this is the greatest advantage for you if you plan to appear for the exam before 26 March 2018. But there are some limitations there, so like what are the limitations here? The time factor, like the time required to prepare for the exam is not good enough for some of the candidates due to their other commitments. So you need to check whether you are able to give sufficient time for the preparation. So time is critical factor here because we hardly we have four months of time uh, to uh, left with you to prepare for this exam. And also like uh, if you are not able to clear the exam in your first try, you would give the next try which is based on the Situation. Because probably if you see there, if you are giving the first try in the month of February, like uh, then you have to sit for the next attempt, right? Like uh, in the in uh, inbox situation only. And this is not a good scenario for you. So this is the disadvantages associated with giving the exam based uh, on fifth edition. And also we'll see like what are the disadvantages of appearing for the exam on or after 26 March 2008. First, you'll see the advantage here. The advantages here is like there are uh, no time constraints for you. If you decided to go for the exam after 26th of March, then there are no constraints for you. Even if you are not clearing the exam in your first try, you can very well give the next try based on the same edition itself. PMI usually like if you see there uh, change the edition once in four to five years. So definitely it is not a big deal for you. But time to factor is one of the another thing you need to consider here. Like I will talk about later. The disadvantages of appearing for the exam based on the sixth edition after that is after 26th of March 2018. Currently, if you see, there are very few study materials like exam preparation books as well as course are available in the market for the pinbox edition. In fact, I can say uh, as of now, no materials are available. Okay, this makes the life of the candidates difficult in preparing for the exam. Okay, and the difficulty level of the exam is based. You see that it is uh, comparatively like difficult when compared to fifth edition because of the addition of uh, like 25 percent of the syllabus. I can say like new editions are there in the box sixth edition. These are the different edges. Fine. Like if you see, like uh, uh, I already spoke about this the time to market. Like uh, if you decided to go for this application, like if you are a PMP certified today, then you can get some opportunities. Like uh, if you are delaying your certification journey, like, like you decided to postpone your 
CMP journey. So in this case, you are losing out some of the very good opportunities. That is, I can say like that is a big minus for you in this case. So obviously you need to think about that. Like only thing is you need to consider whether you have sufficient time uh, with you to get success in the PMP exam. Fine. We can see right now what are the success strategies, right, for candidates willing to appear for the exam based on the fifth edition. Before going into details, I like to add one more point here. Uh, like you need to do a SWOT analysis on yourself. That's what is your strength, what is your weakness, what are the opportunities you have it, what are the disadvantages you have it. Okay, you need to know that first. Only you know whether you know or you, if you know the disadvantages, whatever associated with you, then only you can know that actually like how the plan, whatever plan you are going to do it, right? Actually, like for your study plan, it will be paka. So make sure that you are allocating time, uh, like based on your weakness, as well as like uh, how much time you are in a position to allocate that actually within your decision. The time is an important factor, and also uh, you need to have sufficient fund to execute your plan. Fund is an important criteria here in this case because, like I know, many candidates are willing to uh, acquire the certification, but they don't want to spend uh, money for that. Like. Uh, uh, I understand the concern there, you know, but the thing is like uh, PMP is one of the toughest examination in the certification world. You need to have all the artifacts with you to practice you very well. That's very important. That's the key to success. Fine. So obviously you need to have fun for that. That's like uh, the whatever uh, money you are spending on this one, right? It is only an investment for you, not an expenses for you in this case. So just remember that actually because it's one of the this certification and the certification world, I can tell you right now. Fine? Fine. Then you have to make sure all the resources are available with you to practice well for the exam. And also you need to have the ability to implement your plan, which is required for achieving success. Ability, see, we are very good in planning. Always I can say like uh, planning is easy, but the implementation of your plan is very difficult, okay? So you need to have an honest judgment of your ability. That's important. If you know clearly like, you know, like about yourself, then you are the right judge for you, whether you can go for the exam or not. Fine. The thorough understanding of the PIMBA fifth edition is required. I can suggest three readings here in this case. Like if you are going through the PIMBA fifth edition, right, actually in the first time, like you'll be in a position to get to know about the terms as well as knowledge areas and the processes. Fine. If you go for the second reading, then you'll be in a position to understand more, like uh, what are the processes related to a particular knowledge area. Okay, and then you also know, like what are the inputs as well as outputs, and what are the tools and techniques you can use it as part of the process. Right, all those things you can be able to know that. Okay, if you go for the third reading, then only you can be in a position to understand the connectivity between the process. The interaction between various processes is important for you to clear the PMP exam. So make sure you allocate sufficient time for yourself to prepare the inbox edition well. Fine. And allocate time for your group discussion. I can say like uh, eight hours of uh, self-study is equal to one hour of group discussion. And also you can get the perception from different candidates, right? So those who are planning to go appear for the exam, they can go for the group discussion. That's mandatory for each and every one. That will help you. And then like uh, you need to practice a lot of pieces based on knowledge areas. Right, that will help you to know your weak areas. Like uh, in a particular knowledge, what are knowledge area? What are your weak, weakness? And then you can work on the weakness there. Again, you can uh, improve yourself on the particular knowledge area, and then give the test again to know where you are standing there. So the quizzes are very important. And then the practice exam, right? Like this is nothing but an exam simulation, right? Uh, that is very very important. Like I can tell you, like before one month of your exam, actually you need to plan for few practice exams. That's important because I don't want you to go directly to the PMP exam and then sit there and experience the difficulties whatever you are facing for the four hours. It requires some kind of physical fitness also there. So you can very well know that what are the challenges you are facing when you are sitting for the exam for four hours. So obviously for that I advise you to go for this practice exam. That's very key. You just go for the practice exam first and then uh, see how well you have scored in uh, different knowledges, uh, different domains. And accordingly, you can put a plan and what is uh, what are the weak areas you can have it, right? Then you can plan it and then improve on those. You just go through the 
system bar guide again is learn those areas and then go for the next practice exam you just repeat the process till the last one and then you can give some for the five days of time before the actual exam that will give you the consolidate the concepts whatever you learned so far right in that way you will face the exam easily fine that is one thing and also i like to add one more point here like if you see the mp exam like when you start the exam during the exam again i am telling you like when you start the exam there are 200 questions are selected for you right all those questions right like uh, are selected at a stretch that is that is a perception that like like people like uh, they are say, telling that uh, based on how we are well we are answering the questions right the subsequent questions are coming into picture it is not the case it is selected once you start the exam 200 questions are selected there each and every question is having their own difficulty level associated with that and if you see like there is no cut there is no cut off marks for pmp exam right like uh, it is like uh, based on the psychometric analysis right it is it is like they are tagging some difficulty levels for all the questions if your question paper is very tough assuming that actually like, your question paper is very tough uh, take an example of initiation domain right in this case there are some 13 percent of questions will be coming into picture 26 percent will be there out of 200 percent so the cut off may be like uh, it will predict the cutoff like if the question paper is too difficult, maybe it is 18 out of 26. If the question paper is too easy, it may say like 22 marks out of 26 is the cutoff for that. So obviously it depends on the difficulty level of the questions which is appearing for you. So each and every candidates may have different cutoffs there. It is based on the question difficulty associated with the particular questions. These are already defined and then it is in the database there. Fine, this is how it is coming there. So obviously what I am trying to say, when you are practicing the exam, right, you need to make sure you are crossing at least 80% of marks in each and every domain. That's important. Then you can very well, you can be confident whatever may be the difficulty level, you will be in a position that you Because each and every domain, we have a cutoff mark and, and also like overall there is a cutoff mark associated with 200 questions. Uh, in, the, in these 200 questions also, like 25 questions are, uh, they are not counted for ranking and then like uh, this a uh, pre-test question there, like to test whether those questions can be included in the actual database, fine. So the role of the practice exam is very important here. To make sure we are passing the uh, like marks, 80% of marks in each and every domain. That's the safest score I'm telling you right now, fine. And top of all those things, you need to stay positive. That's important because through the process of your preparation, you can get, you can be deviated by various stuff like. You can friend come, your friend will come to you and then say like, uh, why are you going for the exam based on fifth edition? Because you have only hardly four months time. So you can be deviated in this case. But you need to say to yourself that actually you thought about that actually multiple times before taking the decision, right? So you need to stay positive and then go ahead and then execute your plan. Definitely you can achieve it. From my end, I can tell you uh, like a couple of hours every day for three months, so are preparing it consistently. The, and also like using all the artifacts, whatever I mentioned here, like you need to uh, go through the PIMBA page three times, QSAS you need to practice it a lot, as well as like uh, practice exam, you need to give it before one month. If you are doing all those exercises, definitely you can clear this exam. This is four months is more than sufficient to clear this exam if you are on top of that. Only thing is you need to see whether you are allocating at least a couple of hours per day. That you are, if you are able to manage it, and also if you have the artifacts, definitely you can achieve success there. Fine, we can move to the next slide right now, which talks about the like success strategy for candidates willing to appear for the PMP exam on or after 26th of March 2018. That is like based on the sixth edition. Again, like uh, the key point here is the availability of more time always comes to some difficulty level when the candidate needs to tackle that. In this case, like more addition, like the addition of like there is 20, 25% of syllabus is added to the in the sixth edition, also like Agile, also is added to the syllabus there. So you need to spend more time in your preparing. Like if you are preparing for three months for uh, in the sixth edition, you have to spend at least until five months there until for the preparation of the sixth edition. Fine. And here also like uh, everybody is working, right? So, so it is difficult for them to allocate time for the preparation and also consistently, right? Consistently they need to follow it for three months means it is difficult. So you need to make sure you are allocating sufficient time for the preparation and make sure you have the sufficient funds to execute your plan to acquire all the articles which is required for you to do that exam. I'll tell you, like if you are only reading the PMP PIMBA guide and then uh, try to go and appear for the exam, definitely I can tell you it is not possible because 
like CMP example, you see that it is having different types of questions. Like nothing is, you don't know, like you have the knowledge right now, you're having evaluated versions there. Like the evaluation is important. That is like, uh, you can do it by preparing for quizzes as well as uh, mock exams. So that is important. Like then only we know that what is a weak area as well as we can improve on those. The three months time, day by day, you can see like you need to have some improvement there. Right? Like to identify weak areas, you need to go through that again and get to know the concepts correctly there. Then you just make sure actually this is a area for you. Yes. In that way only you can achieve the success within three months. Like if you are just reading the pin bucket again and again for multiple times, then I am sure actually you will not be in a position to clear the exam. Maybe some, some exceptions are there. I can say 99% of the candidates, they cannot clear this exam because of the difficulty level, I can tell you. It is not like any other exam, like you cannot see any dumps there, like uh, it is something different. PMI, PMI also like make it difficult actually every year, actually, like they consider um, candidates uh, like clear the PMP exam like 10 or no, 15 years back, actually, like uh, something different, actually. They, they have done it very easily. At that time only 61% of marks is required to clear the exam. I think no like minimum cutoff nowhere there. Now you see the they may also want to standardize the PMP certification. So they are they are doing all those uh, stuff such like to make sure that the candidates really need to sit and work hard for achieving success in the particular exam. So make sure you need to understand, you need to remember all those stuff. Okay. Similarly, like uh, you need to go through the pin box installation three times here and allocate time for a group discussion and uh, you need to go for multiple pieces there based on knowledge areas as well as need to go for the practice exam using exam simulation software. And also like for the sixth edition, I can tell you one more point, like you need to prepare very well for the areas which is changed in the pinbox edition. That's the key. You can anticipate a lot of questions from this area. The exam guideline is not changed right now, right? So, for example, whatever changes is happened in a initiation domain, like uh, we have sufficient stuff to ask from the changed area itself in this case. So you can expect a lot of questions from this area, which is changed right now. So focus on those areas, that should be the key for you to clear the sixth edition, okay? And also need to focus closely the Adele part, like because this is an addition, they have done it, right? So obviously that is important. You can also anticipate some of the terms related to the Adele there and the questions there. So make sure you are familiar with all those concepts. That's important, right? Let us move to the next slide right now. Yeah, it's about the common traps, like which needs to be eliminated during the transition process. Uh, the first one is plan for the exam based on others' judgment. It's a disaster for you in this case, I can tell you. Like you need to take the decision based on your own judgment, okay? Uh, you can connect with your mentors, you can connect with your managers, you connect with your peers and then get to know the inputs from them. And then you need to analyze those inputs and then take a decision based on an over decision, how much time you are able to get it, how much fund you have it into acquire the artifacts, that's the key here because you have uh, like I can say, like uh, you have less time actually if you are planning to go for fifth edition. So obviously you need to take the decision here, fine? Like you are the creator of your own destiny, always remember that. You need to go with your own judgment here, okay? Uh, the second one is Pimbox fifth edition is too difficult to crack. And you can hear about this one uh, already, right? Actually, like uh, I differ from that, like uh, the case, like you need to read a lot actually compared to fifth edition, that's it. Difficulty level, I don't think it's like it's uh, too difficult here. Like only thing is you need to allocate more time here. That one of the uh, changes you have done in your strategy, right? That's it. Actually, apart from that, actually, like everything you can learn it. And nowadays, like if you see like uh, most of the managers, right? Actually, they have an idea about the agile concepts right now. So it is not uh, so difficult like others. If you don't have the idea about the agile, then you need to pay more attention here in this case. Otherwise, like I don't feel it's like it's too difficult to crack. It's like as difficult as uh, basket tradition. That's it. Uh, Non-availability of study materials and courses for the basket tradition. This is another stuff. Like, uh, if you see, like, lots of people started uh, preparing artifacts for this one, and then you can see many stuffs in the market, like uh, from January or February onwards. In this case, this labs also like uh, started the preparation, and then you can expect uh, uh, those things around uh, December, like. But uh, you need to. Uh, and just it's my guess only that actually, but you need to get and check with these this labs on this one, okay? Uh, these are the uh, common traps I can tell you. And the key takeaway from this section. This is a very important chapter for you, the conclusion. The availability of time as well as fund only decide whether you want to go for the PMP 
exam based on this tradition, nothing else. If you have the time and you have the fun to acquire the artifacts required for you to practice very well for a duration of at least three months, then definitely you will be in a position to achieve success in your exam. One important thing is like you need to stay positive throughout the like process as well as you need to take this judgment based on your own judgment. Like you need to be, because you are the best person to tell about how much time you will be in a position to get it, right? So, and also you need to see like whether you are able to execute your plan properly. We need to give priority for this one and then you have to execute it. Then you can definitely achieve it. These are two things you need to consider and then you can say, if you are taking the checklist, you can do that, then you definitely can appear for the exam, go and wait, fine. If you don't have the time, because you may be in the middle of some uh, uh, critical projects, actually, you may not find time, right? In this case, fine, you can very well appear for the exam based on the sixth edition. You can focus on the change areas uh, in the sixth edition and practice well before appearing for the exam. You mitigate the additional difficulty in the pin box sixth edition by focus to preparation and gain new knowledge in the process, fine? But that's the conclusion from my end. And I, uh, I finished. Is there any other questions? Please shoot me right now. Thank you so much for the uh, wonderful uh, session lesson. Uh, I request all the attendees. Um, uh, I'm unmuting uh, all of you right now, so you can just you know um, ask your questions one by one. I think I've got one hand raised by Kartikan, so I'm just unmuting him. Kartikan, you can go ahead and ask. Kartikan, are you there? Okay, uh, we are not able to hear him. You can post your question if you are not able to um, speak out or some mic problem. Okay, I think Subramaniam, uh, you have raised uh, your hand. Um, you can go ahead and ask your question. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Elton, uh, are you able to hear him? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm able to hear you all, but can you should confirm whether you are able to hear, hear me? So, Subramaniam, I'm able to hear you. I was just checking with the presenter if he is able to hear you. I think he is ah, not okay. able to. I can go to the questions? Yeah, please write a question and I'll post it to him. Okay. Let me go to the particular window. Just type it out, Namita. Yeah, I just uh, 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 I'm just assigning the question to um, Lixen. He will just pick it up one by one. So um, I'm just putting it on behalf of you to uh, Lixen and all full audience. Uh, the question has been asked is, considering two hours of preparation, is it okay to go for fifth edition? I'm just posting it uh, so that Elixir can um, uh, have a look on this. Partly he has already uh, addressed this question, saying that two yeah. hours, maybe he has just mentioned a couple of hours first day and we still have three months to go so looks okay but I will just you know ask Alexan or request him to answer this.
Alexon, um, there is a question in the window. Can you just pick it up? Mr. Alexon, are you there? So, uh, Subramanam, I mean, uh, because he is not able to uh, reply or if he is uh, answering in the chat window, we will just pick it up. But uh, uh, being a PMP and ACP and uh, a lot of other certification, I can also tell that couple of hours per day for three months looks good enough for me to target uh, PMP uh, before 26th of March. Uh, the okay. only thing is have to be focused. The major mm. uh, issue which we face when we prepare for PMP is we prepare for 15 days and then we just, you know, take a break of 15 days and don't touch the book. So uh, uh, that makes that uh, preparation also void, void kind of stuff. So uh, if you go by focus approach, a uh, couple of hours daily for three months is enough for me. Uh, one more request to you because you have asked this question. There is a, a strategy blog which we have put uh, on our website that how do we plan for PMP. There are some stepwise approach which you have mentioned like you know you have to just prepare uh, for yourself first reading the book and then uh, some other guide, reference guide you have to just complete and then focus on the mocks continuously two three mocks you should get 80% uh, uh, plus so that you are sure that when you are attempting your exam you are fully confident. So I would request you to go through that blog as well that will help you a lot in your preparation sure. and targeting exam for uh, uh, you know before 36th of March. I hope I answered your question. Yes. Okay, I'll take the next one. Uh, Kartikin RS has asked, can we start learning the written <coughs> five eighth edition to appear for sixth edition, just leaving the changed areas? Uh, you can do that, Kartikin. I mean, um, but. If you're targeting your exam after March, then just wait for the next edition to come. That that that's what I would suggest. Because anyway, you have uh, you don't have any time limit in that case. And uh, settling down with the new material um, takes little time. Probably I'll unmute you also if you want to uh, share your thoughts. Uh, I'm not able to hear you still. But if you want to speak and say something, you can do. You are unmuted. That is what uh, I would recommend you. So when can we expect the the new edition? I mean, like uh, new materials for this. Um, uh, when Rita Mulkay will uh, make it available to the market, I'm not very sure on that. But yeah, uh, Pembook is available, and many of the uh, institutes are already uh, you know getting ready for that. For that matter, our Wizlab. Uh, uh, PMP uh, version of uh, the uh, module will be available very soon. Uh, sometime you can say we are targeting for mid-December or December end. So that you can take and uh, if you have any doubts we can uh, take it up from there. But uh, if you are targeting for 6th edition of PEMBO and targeting your exam after uh, 26th of March, then yeah. let this turbulence settle down and get mm -hmm. uh, new materials roll out in the market and then you prepare for that. I would recommend that because then again if you do some preparation uh, you have to redo that and always compare that what was changed and what I missed and all that. Okay, okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Is only bookish knowledge is enough to pass the exam? I will unmute you uh, Bala Gaura. Just a second, I'm just unmuting you, some problem. Okay, not able to do. Anyway, I'll just uh, uh, try to answer your question. Is only bookish knowledge is enough to pass the exam? Experience won't help to pass. So, uh, <laughs> little tricky question. But um, when we are saying uh, uh, PMP as an exam, it is focused on uh, PMBOOK and the kind of uh, body of knowledge they have created by PMP. So if you can relate your experience with the knowledge which 
uh, Pembook is talking about, it's good. You can really, you know, make use of your experience. But the challenge is, most of the PMP experience, because project management in the projects is different to what exactly is there in the book. Sometimes you try to answer the question from your experience, which is actually not right as per the book. So there you have to make a call. That is uh, what is tricky for you to make a call. See, think of this as a, uh, as a situation, you know, where um, you always have some kind of ideal and uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, tailored version of uh, the thing which you use in your project. We don't go by uh, the ideal path always in a project. We do take the caveats and we do, do take the waivers uh, when the situation demands. If some documentation is not required uh, and uh, we are in hurry, we can't submit that document officially, we'll just park it and do it later uh, only to submit to our uh, quality department. But if you answer the question uh, in PMP with that uh, thing in your mind, then it may go wrong. So that's what I'm saying. This question uh, will be answered if you um, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, appear for three to four mocks. Then you will get to know, okay, what uh, what is the focus area of uh, PMP? What exactly they are trying to understand? What exactly they are trying to judge in you uh, as a PMP aspirant? So once you will go a uh, little beyond in your journey of PMP preparation, you have started uh, your, uh, uh, you have already finished your uh, book reading, and then you're going to mock, you yourself will feel that mock is not exactly what is there in the book. It won't be that easy in the PMP exam. So there will be some of the things which you have to infer out of it as per your knowledge. And then again, there will be few of the things you have to really relate to what you have uh, read in the book, that call you have to make. And that will be clear to you once you will do one or two mock exams of PMP. Uh, you can ask me if you uh, have still uh, further question. Uh, I just try to unmute you and uh, it has got muted again. But uh, uh, if you have any question, you can just ask me. Uh, any other question from anyone? I saw some uh, hands up from Subramaniam again. Uh, I'll just try to unmute you or you can post your question. Okay, uh, I think in that case, yeah, uh, we are good. Uh, I'm not seeing any further question posted or any uh, hand raised. So uh, I'll take this opportunity to thank all of you who have attended. I know we had a technical glitch in the beginning and uh, there was some issue which WebEx couldn't solve. So we quickly uh, moved to uh, go to webinar. Will we keep on doing our webinars? Please do check our website for the upcoming webinars. And we may repeat this one because we uh, couldn't do as we wanted to do. So we may again repeat this particular webinar. So do join and uh, keep your questions ready for our next session. Thank you so much.